Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, in fact I'm quite excited today because I'm off to Blackpool. <laughs> Blackpool you ask? Oh yes. When I was a youngster, and of course, my family were all coal mining. It was a coal mining area that I live in. And the big, big deal uh, for coal mining families was to take a day out excursion and go to Blackpool. Oh my goodness. There, there was big, huge beaches. Of course, there were all the arcades. Penny arcades, putting your penny in the slot machine, try to make a fortune as... So we thought, and there is a tall tower right there in Blackpool too. Not quite as tall as the Eiffel Tower, but it's very similar in construction. And of course, there was ice cream and fish and chips and all the other goodies that you could get from a typical British North of England seaside town. I think the last time I was in Blackpool was, hmm, my goodness, I think I was probably 10, which means I went there with one of my dinosaur pets. <laughs> anyway, so we're off to Blackpool today. Oh, and here's something from Stanley Holloway. Stanley Holloway, who's a he was the one that sang, um, I'm getting married in the morning, you know, in uh, My Fair Lady. If you want to look that up, that's again, that goes back a few years. And his monologue went, there's a famous seaside place called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr. and Mrs. Entwistle went there with young Albert, their son. A grand little lad was young Albert, all done up in his Sunday best, with his stick, with its horse's head handle, which was the best that Woolworths could sell. Well, they didn't think much to the place at all. The waves, they were all fiddling and small. There were no wrecks and nobody drowned. In fact, there was nothing to laugh at at all. <laughs> And so it goes on from there where Albert is taken to the local zoo and gets eaten by one of the lions. It's a, it's a fascinating little story it's, uh, and it's also funny. There is a sequel, of course, where young Albert comes back, but I'm not going to give the game away. You'll just have to look that up on Google, okay? So... Blackpool is our destination today and I'm going there at the invitation of a YouTuber who uses the title 737 Tutorial. So thank you for the invitation. I am delighted to go to Blackpool. He asked, could I do a flight from Dublin, E-I-D-W, to my hometown of Blackpool? So. That is apparently is where 737 Tutorial lives and I am delighted to do it. I've got some excellent scenery. EIDW scenery for Dublin is made by MK Studios. Beautifully detailed. I couldn't find any commercial scenery for Blackpool but I did find some excellent freeware scenery. 
And this scenery was created by Ian Broadbent at IDB Scenery Design. And it's freeware, absolutely marvelous scenery. Now, a little history about Blackpool Airport. Now, I've never been to Blackpool Airport, even though I've been to Blackpool, but I was 10 the last time I was in Blackpool, which of course is, you know, long, long, long time ago. And the airport there was apparently, it's gone through many owners over the years. The latest owners went into administration sometime last year. And now, from November, it has officially been taken over by the local Blackpool Council. What they intend to do with it, I don't know. At the minute, the, the only flights that are going in and out of Blackpool seem to be business-sized jets. You know, the, like the Lears and the things like that. Six, eight-seaters is about the max. And they will go off to various um, sundry places. I don't know if they're charter or what. I have no idea. Of course, there are a lot of private aircraft, Cessnas particularly, and of course, Beechcraft, Pipers. They are all there and there are, you can actually go there and you can take lessons in flying. So that is still in operation. But there are no airlines going in and out of Blackpool at the minute. It seems that in the past, Ryanair did go from Dublin to Blackpool. But that has now stopped. But Ryanair does go from Dublin to nearby Liverpool. And I checked that particular route and found that their, air, their altitude, their cruising altitude, was flight level 230. So we will follow that since it is about the same distance between the two points, between Dublin and Liverpool as it is between Dublin and Blackpool. The runway that we want to try to come in on is going to be, let's see, I think that is runway 28. That would be the runway to come in on if we can make that, if the weather is cooperating. As the route, as you're coming in, according to the chart, you would come in right over the NDB and the ILS uh, localizer on the runway itself, go out, then take an angle, swing around, and then come back in on final. And we're going to try to do that. And the reason for it is because just about four miles to the north of the airport is the famous Blackpool Tower. And I'm hoping that the weather will be good enough and we will be close enough. And I know the scenery has the tower, but I just don't know how clear. But I'd like to be able to play tourist and take some photographs. How does that sound? <laughs> Right. In that case, then, I think it's time to go into pre-flight and let's see what we can find out about the previous Ryanair flights that went in and out of the area. And we'll see what we can do to build ourselves a flight plan to go from Dublin to Blackpool. Yes, let's go to Blackpool. Now here we are in Flight Aware and I'm looking at a flight between Dublin and Liverpool. This is Ryanair 1442 and there's the designators right there. It left Dublin on time and got to Liverpool 20 minutes late for whatever reason. Anyway, down here it's I'm picking this particular flight to look at because Blackpool is just up here, right about here. So 
The distance between Dublin and Blackpool and Dublin and Liverpool is almost the same. Looking at the flights, it looks like this one was 21,000 feet. And then it made the long, slow descent into Liverpool. Previous flights, I noticed, were 23,000 feet. We can find out what ours will be by just letting Simbrief make that decision for us. Here's windy.com looking at our point of beginning here. There's the airport right here, just north of the city itself. Wind is coming in from 130 degrees at nine knots, varying between 100 and 160. So there's, no matter what, it looks like it's going to be a, a crosswind takeoff. Visibility, however, is 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 2,700, scattered at 2,900 feet. Temperature, nice 16 degrees. And there's the Q&H. And of course, it is VFR and has been for the last several hours. Looking at the runways, the likelihood is we'll be taking off if the weather is holding up. It looks like then we may be coming and running out here on runway 10. We'll have to see. As to where we will be parking, this little extension right here, this is where Ryanair uh, seems to originate all their flights from. So we will be at one of these stands at Dublin. Not sure which one yet, but it will be one of these. Now here is... This is the airport here. This is Blackpool. And the tower is just about here where you've got, it says 1-3 for the temperature. And this is where the airport is located. As you can see, it's, this is Liverpool down here and there's Blackpool. The two are pretty much the same distance from Dublin. Wind here in Blackpool is 280 degrees, so we should be able to land right on runway 28 and go straight down and into the wind. It's showing 8 knots, but it is varying between 250 and 310 degrees, so there will be possibility of some crosswind coming into land. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, few clouds at 2,000 feet. Q&H is 1021. Little slightly higher pressure, but not remarkably so. And again, VFR. Here's the airport. Here you can see this is the beach. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit here because the airport is down there. But this little bump right here, uh, ah, right here, this is where, this bump here, this is where the tower is. And I'm hoping that we will get a chance when we fly in, we come in this way, go out, and then make a teardrop to come back in. So I'm hoping at this particular point, somewhere in this area, when we drop down to 3,000 feet, I'll be able to get some good footage of the Blackpool Tower. And Blackpool Tower is one of the big draws and attractions, of course, of going into Blackpool, apart from all of the entertainment that Blackpool offers. All right, going into Simbrief, we are Ryanair, we are 186, and we are going to depart from EIDW, and we're going to go to EGNH. 
And there's the alternate. Let's look at our airframe, bring that up. And there's our registration. It says schedule flight time. Now this is block time. This is from closing the doors to opening them is one hour, it says. Passengers, well, we are full because we have what? Yes, of course, we have champagne and caviar. This is the route that they have given us, and it's a mere 141 nautical miles. Ah, this is interesting. They've actually given us a route that takes us across the, the bottom end to Wallasey and then Wallasey on up to Blackpool. Well, that's, uh, that is interesting. Oh, well, we'll do what we can and we'll follow the route and we'll make the best of it. Although it would have been nicer had it been more direct, but we shall work with what we've got. Looking over here at all of the other routes that have been done in the past, you can see all of them go to Wallasey before they go up. So it looks like that is what we will be doing. All right, let's save the flight and let's generate the flight plan and see what it tells us. Oh, interesting. This one has given us a cruising altitude of 19,000 feet. Well, that is interesting. And airtime is 37 minutes. There's the block fuel right there. There's the routing. It says planned optimum flight level. So I suppose that must be why they did it. Here is the... Uh, designation Ryanair 186. There's our flight altitude and here this is the flight route itself. And EGLL is London. Why in the world are we going all the way down to London if we miss Blackpool, I have no idea, but that's what they've given us. Okay, cost index is six, average wind is 166 at 11 knots at our elevation. Right over here, there's the block fuel, reserves, in case we, everything goes pear-shaped and we have to go down to London to land, there's our reserves. The trip and taxi is a mere, well, just shy of two metric tons. No tankering recommended. This is the route that was published. If we follow this and there are no changes, I'll put this at the bottom in the description box. If we do make changes, well, then I'll make the changes and, and put the alteration in there as well. Now, we're going to need to know these three levels for putting into the descent in for the programming. Looking at the route, there is no significant weather, so there should not be any problems at all with uh, any anything going in and looking at the wind well it looks like most of the wind is going to be hitting us as a crosswind as we make our dis journey across and then it will become a tailwind from Wallasey up to Blackpool and this is our vertical profile flying up here, going across, and then making our descent down to Blackpool here. Pretty straightforward. All 
All right, here we are in Navigraph charts. Let's pull it up and make ourselves a new flight from SimBrief and we'll use the latest one that we just made. Here you can see Dublin out here, the route right across the top end. This is Anglesey Island, by the way. And Holyhead, this is where if I was taking the uh, the journey to Dublin, which I have in the past, I take the train usually to Holyhead and then that ferry goes straight across. That's always been the way I've done it. But today we are flying into Blackpool. So let's open up the charts. We're going to need to know the airport. We want it. And we are wanting that this parking stands for Pier 1. So this is the one that we're going to need to pin. And we will need to pin the coordinates as well. We are going to be parked somewhere here in one of these stands, which is where all the Ryanair seems to be parked. And the departure, we'll put the chart overlay on. There it is. There's the, this is the route that we'll be taking to make our departure. If the wind changes and we go up this way, well, it's still using the same chart. And I'm going to pin that. Going over to Blackpool, open up the charts. We'll need to know parking stands and coordinates, of course, and we'll need to know the airport. And this is the airport right here. There's, it's a good runway, 6,132, 6, so more than enough to land on. No approach chart, so there are no stars, but we'll be coming in on runway 28. So this will be the one we'll be using, ILS DME, and I'll pin that. Now let me put this up over the top. So apparently when we come in, we will be coming in to Wallasey, going up here, and then, well, it makes more sense to go from here, out over to here, and then in. So I'm not sure how much of the tower we're actually going to be able to see. Unless I make some really radical changes, say to go from here, up, and then in, and there's that tear drop, and coming around to land that way. We'll just have to play it by ear, won't we? There's no other way for it. Okay, looking at ILS runway 28. And there's the Blackpool Ordinary Run coming in, which is the one I was thinking that we would be making. But if the other one, now coming in from Pole Hill, see that's the other option. Pole Hill is a waypoint over here, and I suppose we could go from here up to this point and then make a straight in landing. Um, we'll, we'll play around with that and see what happens, shall we? Let's, let's make our decisions when we get in the cockpit. Okay, close everything up. We've got everything ready now that we need. So all we need to do now is climb in the cockpit and let's get things started. Welcome aboard Ryanair 186. I do hope that you enjoy the flight today. This is for you. This is 737 Tutorial. The one who runs that YouTube site, well, this is your flight today. We are going to go to Blackpool. 
And right now we are in Dublin International Airport and it is a wonderfully detailed airport. We are at stand 121 and this scenery is made by MK Studios. Now I'm going to show you the detail on this. It's really very, very good. So there I am looking down the uh, terminal section and over there you can see this is where the passengers will appear to, well, the self-loading cargo as they're called to come on board. And there you can see we are at stand 121. Look at the detail on this. We can actually see right through the windows. And aircraft have been departing and arriving while we have been parked here. Oh, look, and this is an interesting one. Look at this kamikaze bus coming up. Look at it, what it does. Somebody's left a baggage cart there. Oh, bang, straight through. <laughs> oh, well. But you know, that is a really detailed bit of uh, animation there. MK Studios ha, did a grand job. Right, well, since we are here, we're all ready. Now, I did make a couple of changes to the flight plan. I went back in and I changed our cruise altitude from 19,000 feet to 21,000 feet. I also changed our alternate airport from London Heathrow to Manchester and that of course results in a smaller amount of fuel that we needed to load on board. We actually have 4,697 kilograms of fuel now, a lot less since we wouldn't have to carry all that extra fuel for reserve. So I made those two changes into our flight plan. All right, battery is on. We have 26 volts. So now I go ahead and I turn on the fuel pumps and then turn on the APU and we'll get ourselves going here. Now, this particular wing, this is called, let's, let me look it up. This is Pier 1, Pier 1. And this is the one that all the Ryanair uh, aircraft use. In fact, all of the pushback uh, equipment poles there, all are Ryanair. So this is the Ryanair, main Ryanair terminal building right here. It's beautiful weather out there today. It's not looking bad at all. Let's see where we are with this. And coming up. There we go. We now have 115 volts coming in from the APU. So up here, I'm turning on the IRS, the left and the right. Turning on the galley in the hope that we get a cup of tea. Emergency exit lights, no smoking. Pass and seat belts. Over here, I'm turning on the left and the right window heats. I'm turning on the probes. I know it's a little early, but I always do. And there's the electrical hydraulic pumps. And next, turning on the APU bleed and the left and the right packs. Listen. And there's that rush of air coming out to warm up the aircraft because Temperature at the minute out here in Dublin is only nine degrees. It's cooler here in Dublin than it is in England at the moment. Okay, and then I turn on the steady lights and now we are set to go ahead and program the FMC. Notice up here, by the way, the forward service hatch light and the equipment light is on. 
those are the Estes and the forward hatch. So we we are ready to have our passengers come on board. All right, the first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to clear all of this, go to the FMC, check that the air rack is up to date and that the program is not showing any errors. Go into position and our starting point is EIDW and we are at gate 121 and it is in the database and it does match. So I'm going to put that into the temporary and then push that and now we have our starting position with our GPS, our sat-nav system, if you will. Now go into route. We are EIDW to start with. And we are going to go to EGNH. So EGNH. We are Ryanair 186, so that's R Y R. 186. Now I go to next page and now I'm going to follow the route exactly as it is on our flight plan. So we're going to go to Lippy first. So L I F F Y and that would be that top one. Then we take the Lima 975, Lima 975, and then that will take us to WAL, W-A-L. And that is our route. And execute that. Go to fix, I'm going to put in E-G-N-H for our destination, which is Blackpool. I want a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle. Now go over to descent, go to forecast, transition level in the UK is set by the ATC. So I'm going to leave that as it is. But I am going to put in the information for three different flight levels and that is the flight level 200, 150 and 100 or 20,000 feet, 15,000 feet and 10,000 feet respectively. The Q&H at our destination is 1017 and then I'm going to put in the information for these three flight levels. So at 200 it is 161 and 12. 161 slash 12 and then at 15,000 feet it's at 209 and 13. 209 and 13 and at 10,000 feet, it is 239 at 10. 239 at 10. And then we execute that. Easy peasy. Go to departures and arrivals. Now here we need to check in with ATIS and see what the information is for the airport terminal because earlier we were given runway 16 for departure and things may have changed, so let's find out. ATIS is 124.52. 124.52. Dublin International Airport Information Hotel 1313 Wind Zulu Visibility 222 at 4 greater than 20 miles. Sky condition, temperature, ceiling 1000 broken, dew point altimeter 52. 1017 landing and departing runway 28 VFR aircraft say direction of flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have hotel well we have hotel and looks like things have changed so we will be departing from runway 28 but to make sure of that we'll get our clearance from the tower just so that we have no problems with that and we are going to departing to the east 
Dublin ground, Ryanair 186 request taxi for departure to the east with hotel. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 28 via taxiway Alpha Tango 1 Foxtrot India November November Echo Romeo Foxtrot 3 Foxtrot 2 Foxtrot 1 Echo 1 contact tower on 118.6 when ready. Taxiing hold short runway 28 using taxiway Alpha Tango 1 Foxtrot India November November Echo Romeo Foxtrot 3 Foxtrot 2 Foxtrot 1 Echo 1 Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance. We're going to go to runway 28, and I've just been looking on here the route that we're going to need to take. We're going to be going straight down the inner road all the way down until we get to box 3, box 2, and then down to the bottom. So now we know where we're going to go to. So, EIDW departure is 28. So there's our first change then is if we are using runway 28 left, we will then be taking the Liffey 6 Alpha departure. And going on to departures and arrivals coming in, we're going to be coming in on ILS 28 and we'll be coming in to intercept the pole transition. So I'll put that in. Now we'll go to legs and let's click over here to plan and see how this works out. I'm going to see if I can get a video of this. Now looking here at the route, I'm going to go and step through each one of these points Here's the beginning and going into this Dublin, going over, there's the Liffey waypoint. Idexa, Guinness, Natco, Linus, Rolex. There's the 30 mile line that we put in earlier when we put the fix in. There's Wall and there's Pole. So it looks like we come up here, make a turn come right on in and then we're right down the final for landing at Blackpool on runway 28. Alright, I'm now switching back to map. I'm switching on the your damper, light has gone out. I'm going to go to weather on here, click on the data, put terrain on that one and click on the data. Now I'm going to turn on the TCAS and make sure that that is active. All right, we're looking good. Our self-loading cargo has come on while we have been busy making the uh, programming. And the, those are the stairs you can hear coming up. Right, I'm going to go back to route now, go into initialization. Now we made the changes. Now our reserves are now only 2,136. The trip and the taxi is 1,899. That comes to 4,035 or simply four as a round number. Reserves 2.1 much shorter, much less required because it's a shorter distance to the alternate should things go wrong. Number six is our cost index. Double click that and it gives me the zero fuel weight. Our trip is 210. And then the, the average wind is 163 at 11, so 163 at 11. Now, interesting thing for Blackpool, the transition altitude at Blackpool is 3,000 feet. So I'm going to put in 3,000 for the transition altitude. And there it is. It, there you can see it right there on the chart. You see that? So, a little different from the rest of the UK, so I have to put that in. Then I execute. 
and one limit. It is a cold five degrees now here. My goodness me, things have changed. Go to takeoff. We'll be using flaps 10. Double click this to get the center of gravity and the trim value. And then one click each on these to give us the information that we need for the MCP. If we are departing on runway 28 left, then the heading, the magnetic compass heading is 277. So I'm going to turn this to 277. I'll also put the heading of 277 in here as well. And I'll do yours if that's okay. All right. 277. We are going to be cruising at 21,000 feet, so I'll put 21 in here. I'm now going to go over here and put 21,000 feet into our flight altitude for the pressurization. And Blackpool, the elevation at Blackpool is 34 feet, which is closer to 50, so I'm going to put 50 for our landing altitude right there. And then the Mac is showing 144 over here. So I'll put 144 in there. And that has that got, that's done. Flight director on here, flight director on there. So I press the VNAV and the LNAV buttons and we have a green light on both. Arm the throttle and now I have to put in the information for our destination. The localizer is 108.15. So I've got to do 108 and 15. That's the VOR. The NDB, which I also have to put in, is 420. So I have 420. And now that is in, in that as well. So we are set for that. Good. Now our decision height at our destination is 228, so I'm going to put 228 into the, there we go, and 1017 is also the pressure that we have here, turning on the auto brake to RTO, okay, and progress on that. Right, we are now, yes, everybody's on board, good, good. Everybody buckled up? Good, glad to hear it. All right, then let's do the checklist. So fuel is correct, windows are all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights they're all out. MCP has been programmed and is correct. Takeoff thrust bugs are set. Speeds are set. CDU pre-flight correct. Rudder air long trim is good. Taxi takeoff briefing. We are going to need to go to our left. So we'll need to go back. Our tail goes to our right and our nose goes to the left. Now I'm going to put the anti-collision light on and we are ready now to do the pushback and engine start. So which engine would you like to start with today? Number one or number two? You want to start number two first? That's the one that will start. All right. Right, I have Navigraph charts showing now, so you can see those right down here at the lower right side. You can see where we're parked on that particular uh, satellite, which is where all the Ryanair are parked. 
and you can also see where we have to go to get down to the runway 28 for our departure. Okay, right, now I'm going to go and menu push back. Are you ready? All set? And we'll start engine number two first, okay? Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Police brake brake, please. Parking brake is off. I'm now switching off Brakes the released. Uh, heat so that we've got the compressor starting to make the spin on the right. Brakes released, here we go. Right, switching to engine number two and looking at number two here. The start valve has opened. You can see here that the N2 is climbing very nicely. When this gets to 24, we will bring in the fuel and it's coming up. There it is, bringing in the fuel. Now, what I'm looking for now is the engine gas temperature to build up. There, look at that. This is in Celsius, by the way. That's really building up in heat. And the oil pr pressure light has gone out. We're looking very good on the start. We should hear the engines in the, there. There's the engine start. And looking up here, I'm looking for 115 volts, which I have. And now I'm switching to engine number one for, to start engine one. Start valve has opened and the N2 is spinning up. We're looking for 24 on that. And getting close. There it is. Bringing in the fuel. Back, complete. Please. Parking brake is set. Now Very the set. engine gas temperature is rising very nicely. I'm now looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. There it is. And we should hear right, the engines in just a moment of engine number right, left, one. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm looking for 115 volts to appear up here. There it is. We have an engine start. And now I'm looking for the tick mark here to go out. And then that will tell us that we have a balanced system. And there it is. There. Now I can switch to the main engines for my power. I'm going to turn on the heating again and turn off the APU and turn off the APU there. All right, now I'm going to get ready. Let's see. One, two, three. There's the taxi lights. And we are looking good. I'm going to go now to laps 10, get that set up. Need to verify the takeoff speeds. No changes there. Right, after start, generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice not required, isolation valve is correct, engine start levers idle D10, flight deck door closed and locked, recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps, we have 10 degrees and green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake RTO, Speed brake lever down, detent, ground equipment is clear. So, we are now ready to try to find our way to the runway 
and not get hit by any of these kamikazes. Ah, okay. All right then. Break off. Everybody holding tight. Good. All right, crew, we are now moving. So we'll go out that way, there we go. Give a little boost to get ourselves unstuck. Make sure that there's, oh well, there's a kamikaze. Go on, buzz off. This is beautiful scenery, really, really detailed scenery. My frame rate is 16, 16.5, 16, 17, 6, around 16.5. And there's a number of, oh, look at all the aircraft coming in to land. There's one after the other coming in over there. My goodness me. Well, he's been given a go round. And so is that one coming in right on his tail. And he's been given a go round. My goodness me, but this is a busy airport. And there's two more right behind them there. Let me show you the detail of all of this. There you can see the aircraft coming into land. This must be a really, really busy time for landing. But look at the detail of the main terminal building. That is really, really good. And look, I have grass, all the detail in the grass, with every bit of kamikaze and everything else. Look at that. There's the plane, looks like he may get to land. Beautiful detail. Request taxi to parking. Anyway, that is MK Studios who made this. Well, we've got just a short way to go to get to the uh, active runway. This is where all the Aer Lingus, this is the national airline, and they all park at these stands. Now we're just getting into Link 2 intersection. We need to go down until we get to Link 1. And then we'll swing to the right. coming up. Now we're entering link one and we'll swing around to the right there. There's even puddles. Wonderful detail. Request taxi to the gate. Orbit on 820. Taxi to gate Lima 140. You can taxi way. Tune into the tower. And we'll go up into position and request our takeoff turns. Well, got to get a little bit 
closer it seems before I can contact the tower. Dublin Tower, orbit 5685 is 7 miles east, inbound ILS, one way to 8, approach. Orbit 5685, Dublin Tower, fly straight in, runway 28, altimeter 1017. Fly straight in, one way to 8, orbit 5685. Well, I had to pull out quite a bit before I could get a hold of the tower because of the the way the P3D has the markings, as it would be. So I am here, and there is runway 28 across the way. Oh, look at that! Coming in for landing. Okay, take off, briefing, everything is done. All lights are on. Engine leads are on. Position light is now strobe. Cabin is secure. And everything is set. All we're waiting now is for clearance to take off. And here's a look at the area. Now this is where two runways come together here at this junction. I need to make sure that I'm on the correct one. And that's the one across there. Everything is looking good. We're all good across the board. I'm thinking there's another aeroplane coming in, but I can't see it. And there's no one on the runway, so it's clear. that was coming in, making his landing. As soon as that one has cleared the runway, we should get our clearance to depart.
push full power and we are rolling. Got a bit of a crosswind. V1, rotate. V1, rotate. V2. V2. It will 
be interesting once we get over the Wirral and then start to turn north to make our approach and descent into Blackpool. So if you want to, go get some of that complimentary champagne and loads and loads of caviar. It's all free, all free on this flight. And then I'll give you a shout as soon as we are ready on our approach, okay? See you in a few minutes. up to it 
intercept just a little bit there we go we're now starting to swing around as we intercept the final course We are 27 DME miles from Blackpool. When we get down, you can get me a cup of tea. How about that? Now, I don't know where you live in Blackpool. I don't know if our route here is going to take us right over the top of your roof. But if it is, do be sure to wave as we cross over. Right, we are 6,200 feet and descending. And we have a little bit of cloud up ahead, so we will lose visibility shortly. But I do have my camera ready and hoping for... Hoping for some video of the tower. We're 36 minutes into our flight. And we I should be able to intercept the localizer in just a few minutes. Ah, things have improved a little bit. Visibility has picked up. Weather is quite uh, interesting here. There's a little bit of accumulated cloud and now we've got some more stratus that I have to go through well we may very well have an instrument approach all right crew secure for landing and here we are we're in the cloud Nineteen DME miles to go. I have the airport in sight. I don't yet see the tower though. Descending very nicely, we're coming in. The wind is coming off our front left quarter here. So we do have a little bit of a crosswind. It's coming from 262 degrees. It's four knots, but it's enough to make things interesting.
this scenery is really very good. If it's got Blackpool Tower in it, then it really has got a thumbs up on my book. now in sight and we are 10 miles out I'm now going to flaps 10 
go. Reverse thrusters are on. Remarkable scenery. This is freeware scenery. It's very detailed given that it's freeware. And it was designed by Ian Broadbent at IDB Scenery Design. He's the one who did it. Beautiful job. Really very nicely done. up here into the main apron will find us a stand that we can pull into in just a moment I think the one over there is number four that should be the one that uh, that we want look at the detail Beautiful detail. And we will turn on this one.
and the teak cast off, everything is off. Right, now fuel off, ATU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Wow. Well, as I said, I've never been to this airport before, so I had no idea what would be, uh, what would be here. But you obviously, since you live here, you probably would have visited this airport a few times. You'll have to tell me just how close it is to the real thing. But I think this scenery, for being freeware, is really, really good. I'm very pleased with this. Well, we made our flight, we came in, we did the long way around, we didn't buzz the Blackpool Tower, of course. I don't think the council would take too well to that, but then again, they never have any sense of humour. But we did make a good landing and we didn't crash, which is always a good thing. Thank you for making the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. And I hope that you have a very good day today. Enjoy the fine weather. It's starting to pick up now for summer here in the UK. So I hope that you have a good time out and do a little paddling on Blackpool Beach, which is what I used to do when I was a youngster. It has been a long time since I've been here. I think I was 10 the last time I came to Blackpool. And yes, that is a long time ago. The world had just been formed at that time. Yes. <laughs> Hoping you have a good day. And now everyone else, I'll see you all again next week for a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye everybody.